Hello! Today in your art studio, we're talking about cardboard. Cardboard is one of the greatest art supplies ever. It's easy to find, it's free, it comes with many different varieties, and specifically today, we're going to be learning how to attach one piece of cardboard to another in six different and interesting ways. Have fun! First, let's talk about scissors. With cardboard, if you need to cut a small area, you want to cut the corner off, regular scissors work just fine for that. But anytime when you need to cut a long span of cardboard, regular scissors are really challenging to use, and you end up having to bend your cardboard in order to get your hand in there with straight scissors. If you use these scissors that are designed specifically for cutting cardboard and other types of board. These are called cardinal scissors. They allow your hand to be above the cardboard while it continues to easily cut through. These things are amazing. They're a game changer for me. Okay, so continue. Cardinal scissors. One method is to create a flange. You cut snip into whatever it is you're creating a flange on. In this case I am using a tube. I've also created a sample with a flat cardboard piece. You need to bend these little flange tabs up. Use your finger to keep it still where you want the crease to happen. It would stick like this onto another surface. You add glue. I like tacky glue for this, but Elmer's will work also. You do not need much. In fact, that's too much. And then, of course, you need to hold it in place while it dries or weigh it down with some kind of heavier object so that you can work on something else while it dries. The other way to do a flange is on a straight piece of cardboard. I have snipped in, folded up, and then what that allows me to do is create a curve with my cardboard. So for some reason I need a curved shape to make a curved wall or area. And this is how I can create that. And I would same glue and place where it will go. Another method is to use slots to hold the pieces together. You want to draw a line where you want the two pieces to overlap, going in one direction on one piece and the other direction on the other piece. I've created a sample here where I will use two pieces. Take your scissor. Slice. You even want to slice a little tiny sliver of cardboard out of there. You can see a tiny little sliver. And then the ones to go in through the top. Same thing. And then you take one slot faces up, the other faces down, and they go inside one another. You might have to use some finesse to wiggle them and jiggle them into place. They will stay nice and sturdy. And you push all the way down until it is where you want it. And if necessary, you cut a wider slat. You can bend the cardboard to create tabs. You take small rectangular pieces as the tabs, the piece you want to glue down onto another piece, and you're going to take the tabs, 
give them a little bend and use them on both sides of this piece to hold it steady. You could also use this as a hinge if you had them only on this side, you could create a door. We're going to place it on both sides to hold it stable. Crease all four. And a tiny bit of glue on each. This glue holds better if it's thinner. Same with Elmer's glue. If it's with too much, it just slides around, and then you can't move on until it's dry. There we go, a nice stable wall. Now we're going to combine using tabs and slots. So I've cut and a piece that I want to stick out from the top, I left a tab at the bottom. I know that will not show later. I have traced the size of the bottom of the tab. Mark where I need to cut. Then I'm going to use my scissor to carefully create that slice. This is what I recommend. I recommend you take regular scissors and you carefully place them at one end and just wiggle. Use your other hand to carefully pull the cardboard up to get your scissor in there to give you a start. And then from there, work carefully to cut out your slot. It needs to be um, large enough to fit to the tab. Take your time, be patient. You do not want to cut your fingers. Then you take the tab, carefully slide through. It'll stay where you want it. You fold the tab underneath at the bottom. Add a bit of glue. and hold steady until it dries. Similar to creating a flange, we're going to create feet. It's very similar to flange, so I've sliced up in a few spots, but then instead of folding all in the same direction, you're going to alternate one direction and then the other to create a stable, straight wall. Okay. It gets glued down onto a surface like this. There are many ways to create moving parts within your cardboard sculpture. Let's try a few. One way is to use a brass fastener. Mark where you want to poke a hole through. I would like this to move this way. I'm gonna use my awl. Be careful again, these are sharp. Place it where I would like the hole. Down onto the table. And then carefully lift and watch your fingers. Place your fastener through both layers. And on the back, spread out the little pieces. Now we have a moving part. Another way to create movement is to get a hole puncher. First, I marked where I want my holes to be. They should not be too close to the edge because then they can tear, the string I'm going to use could tear through if I pull too hard. So I'm lining up two holes on each piece of cardboard. Then I'm going to tie them together. You can tie them together with string, wire, or whatever you've got, or whatever you like the look of for your project. Another way to create movement within your cardboard sculpture is to utilize corrugated cardboard for the fact that it has these tiny corrugation which creates hollows within the cardboard itself. So for the sake of our demonstration, I've cut many small pieces to show this. 
one thing you can use is a toothpick or a skewer or a tiny dowel and your cardboard can spin on that. You can use an embroidery needle with embroidery thread to connect many pieces the way you would beads. You can create so many things this way. And last but not least, I have a paper clip that I am unfolding. You could use paper clips, you can use wire, you can use string or yarn. And you can create movement this way as well. I like using wire because later on I can bend the ends. I can poke a hole in another piece of cardboard and I can bend the end and fold it under and create an interesting shape on top of my sculpture that is very well attached. All right, enjoy your sculpt around the room.